We have a great group of patriots, uh, as you know. Uh, Byron Donalds is an incredible guy. Yeah. Incredible guy. And I noticed he happens to be on the list of potential vice presidents. Would anybody like to see him as a vice president? I noticed. I noticed your name is very high on the list. That's good. You should be on the list too. What's going on, guys? So we got to talk about the Trump VP pick, okay? So who do we think is going to be? Who's going to be for the best? I'm going to tell y'all right now who I think should be VP pick, okay? It's literally probably on the screen already. I think Byron Donald should be Donald Trump's VP pick. Now, why Donald's, okay? This guy has been on the campaign trail with Trump a lot and done interview after interview after interview over and over again on all these news media networks okay everyone else on the list has not been doing that it's certainly not to the same degree and extent as byron donald's has in addition donald trump is heavily targeting and doing a lot of outreach to minority groups including black and hispanic and I believe that if he wants to add a layer, a very strong layer of genuine, just genuineness, I don't know if that's a word, but basically if he wants to legitimize this whole, yes, I support the African American population, the Hispanic American population, if he wants to truly legitimize it, Byron Donalds is a brother brother. He acts like what one would expect a brother to act like he is conservative he has a family even though he has a uh, white wife again kamala harris i mean her husband is white like he looks like just a regular white guy so i've heard people criticize donald's like he ain't even got a black wife it's like well neither does kamala harris have a black husband so shut the h up but anyway there's a lot of things about donald's he really comes across as a genuine guy now is his record as solid is as a Tim Scott, who's another black person, or uh, J.D. Vance, Doug Burgum, all that stuff. I, I would say no, he doesn't have as good of a record, but I don't think that this election in being elected is gonna come down to your record as a politician. At the end of the day, Trump's record is great during the time he was president, and that's what, the main reason I think people are gonna vote for Trump. This next little bit, I think it's gonna inevitably come down to basic identity politics. Sarah Palin was the wrong choice back in the day of John McCain. This time, I think that Byron Donalds would be the correct choice. There's a couple other people here that are gonna show up on the screen. I'm gonna discuss them as well. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and react to this. Well, the veep stakes are on. Speculation okay. continues. So look. This is the short list. Okay, you got Ben Carson. Let me, I'm gonna go through every last one of these people, okay? So uh, the only person I can't go through is uh, Senator uh, Cotton. I don't really know much about that guy. Doug Burgum, uh, good record, boring guy. I'm, I'm gonna go through all the people who are not black on the list first. Rubio, I think Rubio is good, but I don't see him really adding anything. Same thing for J.D. Vance. It's like hard to see them really like adding anything different. I'm definitely going the identity politics right here because it works. Whether like it or love it, guys, it works. At least Stefanik. Maybe it can help a little bit. I love Stefanik. It can help a little teeny tiny bit with the female vote. A little bit. But at the end of the day, I don't really think she really sways any voters that much. That's my honest opinion. Ben Carson. Awesome guy. Surgeon. It says Dr. Ben Carson because he's a very accomplished surgeon, but kind of a boring guy. I'm keeping it real. Apologies, Carson, if you ever see this video. I think you're an awesome guy. Uh, Senator Tim Scott. Senator Tim Scott, I'm sorry, but he's like the most boring politician in the history of boring politicians. Byron Donalds is an exciting guy. Let matter of fact, play the clip. You guys got a child ladder, man, if you want that to pick up. But, but let me tell you this. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a, this is a family affair. 
This is for all of the people across our country. We say, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Oh, I'm telling you, Bronx, you're making me feel good because here's what I know. Your energy, your support, we're going to do something that the media says can't be done. The Democrats take New York for granted. They don't believe it will be done. But in November, we can turn New York State red. I rest my case. Let's continue. To swirl over Donald Trump's possible picks for vice president on the Republican ticket and the former president giving another hint in the battleground state of Michigan over the weekend. Byron Donalds is an incredible guy. Yeah. Incredible guy. And I noticed he happens to be on the list of potential vice presidents. Would anybody like to see him as a vice president? I noticed, I noticed your name is very high on the list. That's good. You should be on the list. Now, I want to point out, I don't believe Trump has made statements like that about anybody else, but let's keep going. Joining us now, that man right there, Congressman Byron Donalds from the great state of Florida. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining the program. Good morning. Good to be with you guys. How so, you doing? So it looks like the president is going to every single community, uh, reeling black voters in, and you're on that list. Um, have you had any conversation with the president about being vice president? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not going to tell you guys that. Oh, well you know, I'm going to keep well that to played. myself. You know, uh, look, I, th I think President Trump's going to make a great decision, but uh, obviously it's his decision, his decision alone. Um, I'm just going to do my job, campaign for him, work hard for him, uh, because the country needs him back as president. It's that simple. We'll see what happens by the time we get to the convention. Yeah. So, have you, uh, are you being vetted? Have they asked you to give them up paperwork and stuff like that? Oh, you guys don't stop with the questions. Well, I'm just curious. Uh, maybe. That's Byron, your answer, Byron, maybe. What's the, what is the plan if he does choose I you? Think, or see, I think the key here is that he didn't say no. So we know that he's at least up for consideration. And I got a, a, something, a special mention here. I don't know if they're going to mention it during this video because I have not pre-watched this, but at the end of the video, I'm going to mention a potential surprise pick that I believe is a game changer, so stay tuned. Marco Rubio, considering a president and a vice president are not supposed to be from the same state, would you have to move? Would you have to give up your seat? Uh, we've been done this row before. I think the last time was with Dick Cheney and uh, George W. Bush. And so I think you would have to look at uh, residency and figure out how you manage that. But you know, it's, it's at that point, the question is, are you going to agree to join the president on the ticket and work hard through the next couple of months mm -hmm. uh, to win back the White House? I I find that to be a tremendous honor. Um, <clears throat> so when that decision has to be made, I'll make it accordingly and we'll move forward. Okay. Looking at uh, what the president's doing, uh, going into the black community, we know we spoke in the South Bronx, then he spoke in Detroit. What kind of feedback mm -hmm. are you getting? What kind of feedback is he getting? What do you find most intriguing of those unscripted moments? Good question. Well, I've, I've had the pleasure of being in the South Bronx and then again in Detroit. And I will tell you, when you talk to the people who don't even have microphones, the people off to the side, these are regular Americans who live in these communities. They are fed up. They're disgusted with what they've seen, exactly. the inflation, the immigration, the lack of banking access. These are all policies that the Democrats have pushed on America, and it's not worked for Americans. It has not worked for black Americans. So they want to change. And I think you're starting to see this bubble up more and more. I mean, obviously, you have to execute this through the campaign and make sure that you turn those voters out. But I truly believe they're there. And I think you're going to see so, some very interesting shifts this so, November. So, Byron, real quickly, because I was out there in the Bronx with you. I've never seen anything like that for a Republican. Never, ever. So I guess my question for someone like you that's from New York, you're a black man, obviously, you understand the in what our people in the community are saying about the Republican Party traditionally. Why is Donald Trump different than any Republican? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, but I'll answer on Donald's behalf. I'll let you guys hear what he has to say, of course. It's because he actually tried. He is doing the outreach. A lot of Republicans don't even try. Donald Trump is trying to do it 
and he knows that he's right. He's on the right side of this. He knows that black communities are suffering is basic math. Who's suffering because of this migrant crisis? Black and Hispanic communities and poor white community, black and Hispanic happen to be heavily in poverty in some impoverished white communities. It's basic math. That's one of the reasons why Donald Trump is doing the outreach because he knows that under a greater economy is easily fixed. It, he really doesn't have to do anything except stop dumb behind woke behind crazy, stupid policies. Because he's not a typical Republican. He's not scripted. And I think that's a good thing. He speaks directly from the heart and from the mind every single day. That is a good thing. And then people also now have, rem they remember him as being president. The country was actually in a great shape when he was president. And Joe Biden's been an absolute disaster. We all know that. And so, you know, black Americans, like every other American is looking around saying, now, wait a minute, you had a guy who had the job. He's way better than the current guy with the job. Can we get him back? And now he's running. Facts. So that's why people are saying, uh, mm -hmm. why is this a hard choice? Donald Trump's the better president. Let's get him back in the White House. Now, I want to make sure that you guys are crystal clear now that we've kind of reached the end of the video here. Do I think that Donald Trump stands a chance still if he selects a white man or that is there a white man who I think will still actually will actually add something, I guess is what I'm looking for. Yes. There's only one person in my opinion that is outside of the identity politics that I think gives Donald Trump a boost. One person that's governor Ron DeSantis out of Florida. Ron DeSantis, his record is impeccable and he has brand recognition as a strong politician. A lot of people know DeSantis. He got heavy vote. He was the number two person in the Democrat primary in Iowa. Okay, he got like 28%. So Ron DeSantis is the only guy, you know, of outside identity politics who I think might be okay. Now, does it take away from the identity politics factor with the black vote? Absolutely. However, do I think it takes away from it that much? Maybe not, because DeSantis is such a strong uh, politician, such a strong leader, such a good governor. For me, since Vivek isn't on the list, because I love Vivek, but I feel like Vivek is just like Indian Donald Trump. So for me, Byron Donald's number one, Ron DeSantis number two, even though DeSantis isn't on that list, you never know. In my opinion, that's the order. But let me know what you guys think. Am I way off? Do we need a female VP? Is identity politics the wrong way to think about this? I definitely think identity politics matters on both sides of the political aisle. But let me know what you guys think. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate you watching the Black Anomaly Rising channel. I'm out. Why, are you, why do you guys think that minority voters, black voters, black male voters have shifted away from President Biden? because he's trash. <laughs> this man is terrible.